Jack Jack. Peace family. It's good. It's your brother Cool. So back with another one. So I told y'all a few videos back that let me see. Now <clears throat> I told y'all a few videos back that I was going to um have a follow-up PowerPoint presentation dealing with um, Negro, Black, and more, and how um, how Black and more do not mean the same thing. And we're going to bring this uh, discussion, you know what I'm saying, to an end. We're going to kill this, clarify it, kill all the BS, and just get right down to the nicks and the cranny of it. So, um, let me pull up the presentation. You guys are really, really going to enjoy this. So, that being said, we're going to get into our uh, PowerPoint presentation. Just want you to guys to know that it's brought to you by Sunil University Educational Department on behalf of Sunil Republic. So, <clears throat> with that, let's get going. So, we're going to go into, as the title says, we were known as the Moors. The Negro is with the black, which means the pale and the shiny. Okay? So, essentially, like I said, the whole big thing is that Moors and black, uh, more means black and black means more. This is further for the for, this is further from the truth. All right? If we analyze things, this is why I got pictures of um, coal. You know what I'm saying? If anyone asks you what color is coal, yeah, you're going to say coal is black. Now, if you pay attention to coal, right, when you put heat on coal, meaning the heat kind of like fire or rays from the sun, you know, like the sun rays, when they make contact with the coal long enough, the coal's begin to turn pale and shiny okay so this is a perfect prime example of a natural phenomenon in which black does mean pale and shiny okay pay attention to coal all right so moors are not pale and shiny more does not mean pale and shiny okay and there are people, tons of people throughout history who have acknowledged the fact that we have, that we are Moors. You know what I'm saying? Descendants of Moroccans born in America. And there have been people who have tried to, who have tried to get us into the belief factor that the Negro, that there is a nationality called Negro, or there is a nationality called Black, which these things don't exist. They don't exist. And the quicker we get our minds out of this state of falsism, then we, you know, the quicker we'll, we can move on to the next step of 
not being um, yoked around, you know what I'm saying, by these uh, so-called Moors who pretend to be our brothers and sisters, but will really put us back in slavery more faster, uh, more quicker than the European would. Sad as it is. That's just what it is. All right, so we're breaking down everything according to the Etima. Of course, for my uh, people, we like to spark up. When they're getting their good um, information on, getting their studies on, you know what I'm saying? Join Spark the Magic Dragon. Spark, spark, spark. continue so I pulled this page up to bring into light the fact that these are the um, racial categories all right you can find these in the Census Bureau and these are what each category represents in terms of the race and what they mean legally okay these are what the, what, um, so essentially classifying as any one of these races is a legal implication. It has legal ramifications on what you do, how you conduct your business, and how you operate. All right. So I've done this quite a few times. So I don't mind I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go over this again. Right. You need to comprehend that black is not black is not me. Right. So American Indian or Alaska Native. Person having origins in any of the original peoples of North and South America, including Central America, and who maintains tribal affiliation or community attachment. Asian, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of the Far East, Southeast Asia, or the Indian subcontinent, including for example Cambodia, China. India, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, Pakistan, the Philippine Islands, Thailand, and Vietnam. Black or African American, a person having origin in any of the black racial groups of Africa. No people. Let's continue on to Native Hawaiian and we'll come back. Native Hawaiian, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Hawaii. Guam, Samoa, or other Pacific Islands. White, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. So as you can see, Black and African American are the only two classifications here that do not have any origins in people. Where are the people? Where do they originate from? Where does the black or African American originate from? Because it's not from people. So therefore, if it's not from people, that would mean that black and African Americans are test tube babies or um, artificial, right? AIs, Terminator, right? So with that being said, we're getting a grasp now in terms of what it means to be black or African American in the Census Bureau system. All right. Okay. So for one, we found out that black, the etymology of black means pale in China. We're going to go into that. Also, the, um, the, Origins. There's no origins in peoples. So, black and African American is artificial. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real.
now we're going to go into some definitions, right? A nation, a people or aggregation of men existing in the form of an organized rural society inhabiting a distinct portion of the earth, speaking the same language, using the same customs, possessing historic continuity, and distinguished from other like groups by their racial origin and characteristics, and generally but not necessarily living under the same government and sovereignty. And then they have the Supreme Court case. See Montoya versus U.S. 180 U.S. 201. You know what I'm saying? Besides the element of autonomy or self-government, that is the independence of the community as a whole from the interference of any foreign power in its affairs or any sub subjection to such power, it is further necessary to the constitution of a nation that it should be an organized general society that is both governing its own members by regular laws and defining and protecting their rights and respecting the rights and duties which attach to it as a constituent member of the family of nations. Such a society, says Vettel, has her affairs and her interests. She deliberates and takes resolutions in common, thus becoming a moral person who possesses an understanding and will peculiar to herself and is susceptible of obligations and rights. So essentially a nation is a people. It's a group of men who form, who come together sharing um, history, sharing a uh, bloodline, sharing a common ancestry, and then they come together and um, live according to their own um, common law, the laws of their ancestors, which is in alignment with the Constitution. All right, so this is something that Black and African American people do not do. They do not nation build because they do not know what a nation is. Because if you just remain a 14th Amendment citizen, you're just child property. You're not people, you're just persons. Now, nationality, that quality or character which arises from the fact of a person's belonging to a nation or state. Nationality determines the political status of the individual, especially with reference to allegiance, while domicile determines his civil status. Nationality arises either by birth or by naturalization. According to Savini, nationality is also used as opposed to terri uh, territoriality for the purpose of distinguishing the case of a nation having no national territory. As an example, the Jews, okay? The Jews have no, no uh, land of their own, yet they are still respected as a group, as a nation. They still have a um, jurisdiction, you know what I'm saying? All their jurisdictions or their communities that fall underneath the synagogue are all protected underneath religious rights. So, see what I'm saying? nationality comes with being a member of a um, society or a group of men, not a group of persons. Okay, so as long as you remain a U.S. citizen, that is corporate. That's a corporate nationality. It's not um, organic. It's not dealing with people. It's dealing with, it's dealing with um, corporations, entities. All right. State. What is a state? A state is groups of people which have acquired international recognition as an independent country and which have a population, a common language, and a defined and distinct territory. Quoting the Swiss jurist uh, Johann Kasper, Blunchley Wilson added, the state is the politically organized people of a particular land. All other authoritative Writers similarly set distinctive physical boundaries to the state. Such an idea would not have been intelligible to the first builders of government. They could not have understood why they might not move their whole people, bag and baggage, to other lands, or why, for the matter of that, they might not keep them moving, their tents and possession unrestingly from place to place in perpetual migration. Okay? So essentially... Forming a state is crucial. It's stupid to not have a state, because if you don't have a state, then it's kind of like you're just floating from place to place. You don't have no real solid foundation, no real stability. Okay? So it's important to be or be associated with a group of people. Okay? A group of people. 
that share, that you have commonalities with. You know what I'm saying? This is how you build a nation. So this right here is the Temple of Luxor. All right. This is built in um, 1400 BCE. Right. That's before Christ era. Now, if we analyze the term black, the term black doesn't go past the 11th century, meaning the 11th, meaning the 1100s. Okay. Now, if we're talking about 1400 BCE, that means you have to go back down from the 1100s all the way down to the first century. You know what I'm saying? And then from the first century, we got to count. We start counting backwards up, which goes into the BCE before Christ era. Okay. So essentially, um, the argument or the debate is that more doesn't go. More is not an ancient term. More is an ancient term. More is actually written on the walls. It's written on the walls in the um, Temple of Luxor. That's why I'm showing you this particular picture before we get into Luxor. All right. So 1400 BCE um, is pretty long. Okay. That's a pretty, pretty long time. That's a little under 5,000 years. Okay. So with that, let's just go into building on Luxor. Now, this is actual inscription on the wall in Luxor, okay, of the term Mer, or Meri, which means beloved one. And the Meri is this symbol right here, the open mouth. This is God, or Meri, or Mer. Okay? That's in the Temple of Luxor. And then look at these translations. Mar'at, overseer of the estates, land superintendent. Mar'a'u, inspector of cattle. Mar'ah, chief of the caravan. Mar'a and Sent, chief of the mountain track. So one thing we can grasp from the term mer is mer is essentially an overseer, uh, you know, ruler, an inspector, or a chief. So to me, it just says more is a chief or a leader or the nega in charge. All right. So these are all ancient terms written in the walls, referencing mers. Okay. So we go. We, we're ancient people. These figures right here. All right, these are carvings that date back 2600 BCE. These are older than the previous photos, okay, of the temples of Luxor. This is in Corral Supe, Peru, which is in South America. The term black dates back to 11th century as being in existence. So who are these people, right? Because they certainly have origins, so they couldn't be black. Because black don't go back past 11th century. And there's carvings on the walls that date back 2600 BCE, before Christ era. So where did these people originate from? What culture do they have? They're not black. Now we're going to get into it. Black. Black is not a nationality. Black does not relate to a nation of people in world history. There never was a black nation, black flag, or a people that claim to be black of uh, to be of black descent. Black does not denote a national origin. Indian. The word derives from indigo, which means colored, stained, or dyed. This is what Columbus named the Tautons, and by tribal names like i.e. Creek Indians, or West Indians, or American Indians, etc., to seal the true identity of our blood. This was a deal between the popes, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of the Christian Empire, uh, written in the Doctrine of Discovery. Okay? Now, a funny thing about English language, I'm learning about um, syntax. This means no, kind of like, um, there's no kind of. 
Like, you know how you can say you like someone and you dislike someone? So dis means no. So discovery means no covery. Recovery means to uh, defraud or bring the truth to the light. All right. So this is how we got to get into proper syntax grammar and not get caught up into talking um, babble. So if you want to talk proper English, then let's talk proper English, but let's stop speaking German. Okay. Now, the word black can be traced back to its Proto-Indo-European origins through the word blake, B-L-A-C, which meant pale, wan, colorless, or albino. Blake was incorporated into Old French as blanc, Italian and Spanish as blanco, bianca, bianco, bianchi, which all means white. In Old English, black person meant fair, someone devoid of color, similar to the word blanc, which still means white or fair person. Let me read that one more time. In Old English, Blake person meant fair, someone devoid of color, similar to the word blanc, which still means white or fair person. In Middle English, the word was spelled as B-L-A-E-C, same thing as the modern word B-L-A-C-K. Only at that time, around 1051 AD, it still meant the fair skin or so-called white person. The words blaca or Old Middle English word still resonates with blank, the Dutch Germanic term for white people of today. Thus, we can see that the Old English Blake was relative to its black origin as it was predominantly used as an adjective to describe color pertaining to matter that was colorless. Other cognates of, bla of Blake include examples like bleak, blake, bleach, blanc. Remember now, black means pale and shiny. Now we're talking about bleach, right? Good examples of the use of Blake as, sometime, as something that meant blonde or fair can be seen in old English literature such as K. Alfred's Beta from, a, from C. 890, where the following phrase can be found. Hefta Blake Fed, meaning have blonde hair. Now, Black's Semantic Shifts. It was not till the 16th century that the semantic broadening of black occurred, both figuratively, connotations as well as literal. From blake, black, bleaken, blaken, and their literal meaning to bleach out or make white, blonde or pale came the figurative meaning to stain someone's reputation or defame or darken. Literally, blake by that time came to mean night like color, dark. One can say a very dramatic shift indeed. It was also the era when the Vandals and the Goths were busy writing themselves into history and writing out the European morals. Milan cross or melanin people out of history. Moros. Melan cross or melanin people. Moros. These additional meanings, however, was purely negative and as their as their influence broadened, the semantic shift of black began to mean having malignant or deadly purposes and even pertaining to or involving death, black curse, and from previous centuries, the black death. Blake underwent a final shift as a K was added to the end of the word and it became a new insulting manner to address the Moors, today so-called blacks, the people that had lived for thousands of years in Europe and around, but were now hated and hounded. They were called the queen's black enemies, the black eye Moors, and finally, just the adjective used as a noun, blacks. It should be noted for the records that word used to describe the color black in historical and classical Europe was the word more, also melas, first used in Europe by the Greeks as moros. Its cognates are found in every European language, even if variant spellings are used. Thus, you have more, M-O-H-R in German, you have more, M-A-U-R-E, mire, mire, M-I-R-E, French, more, English, moros, Italian or Spanish. You have more, M-O-R, Old and Middle English. All those variants meant the same thing, the color today known as black. Negro, which is a noun, a member of a dark-skinned group of peoples originally native to Africa, 
south of the Sahara. So you see how Negro and Black do not have the same interpretation. Negroes have origins in people. Negroes have origins in people. Negroes, not blacks, African Americans. All right, and they refer to a dark skinned group of peoples. They always refer to dark skinned, not black people. Dark skinned peoples. They're being specific. Law is specific. Dark skinned people, not black people. We should stop referring to ourselves as black people and refer to ourselves as dark skinned people. Okay? That would be, uh, uh, yeah. I messed that up. That would be a much better uh, look, if you ask me. Much better look. I might have gone too far back. Let me make sure. Okay. Mid 16th century via Spanish and Portuguese from Latin niger, nigger, black. The word Negro, as is used in the English speaking world to refer to a person of black ancestry or appearance, the usage was accepted as normal even by people classified as Negroes until the Civil Rights Movement. During the American Civil Rights Movement of the 1950s and 60s, some African American leaders in the United States objected to the word referring black because they associated the word Negro with the long history of slavery, segregation, and discrimination during the 1960s, the term Negro became considered to be a so-called ethnic slur. Well, I can tell you that the shift of slavery was upgraded to a more technological form, so you're thinking that by leaving the term Negro, you're, you're leaving behind the history of slavery, when in all actuality, you're just adopting a new name to actually carry on that long legacy, known today as Black or African American. So if you want to continue the legacy of slavery, which is a false legacy and actually is not your legacy at all, being an autochthon or original person, then you need to come back home, meaning mentally, study yourself and study the history about yourself, the history that we were never taught in school and the history that will never be taught in school. All right. So we got to study ourselves so that we can teach our children. Now, Negro superseded colored as the most polite terminology at a time when black was more offensive. Negro, so I'm going to read that one more time, y'all. Negro superseded black, um, I'm sorry, Negro superseded colored as the most polite terminology at a time when black was more offensive. The United States Census Bureau announced that Negro would be included on the 2010 United States Census alongside black and African American because some older black Americans nevertheless self-identify with the term, the term being Negro. Indian inhabit of India or South Asia pertaining to India, see 1300 noun and adjective from the late Latin Indianus from India, applied to the aboriginal native inhabitants of the Americas from at least 1553. As a noun, 1610s as an adjective, reflecting Spanish and Portuguese use on the mistaken notion that America was the eastern end of Asia. Okay? So remember now, how can we be Indians if Indians are those who inhabit, are the inhabitants of India or South Asia pertaining to India? So how can we be Indians if we say Indians? Just keep on reading. It was also used occasionally, 18th century to 19th century, of inhabitants of the Philippines and indigenous peoples of Australia and New Zealand. The old French adjective was Indus and Indish, was common in 16th century. Red Indian, to distinguish the Native American from inhabitants of India, it first attested 1831 in British English, but was not commonly used in North America. More than 500 modern phrases include Indian, most of them U.S. and most impugning honesty or intelligence, such as Indian gift. Know who you are, yo. Won't get lost in the trap.
No. Admiralty. Second paragraph of Black's Law, 4th edition. It is properly the successor of the consular courts after the fall of the Western Empire, a.k.a. America, a.k.a. the New World. We're still watching the United States Corporation Company fall. So what empire in the West fell? The Supreme Court has said that the de jure government offices still exist, but the people have failed to occupy them. The last of the United States Consular Court, i.e. Morocco, was abolished in 1956. Refer to USC Title II, Chapter 22, Section 141 and 143, if you need qualification and verification. Right? But let's be real here. The de jure government offices still exist, but the people have failed to occupy them. The de jure offices of government still exist, but the people have chosen not to occupy them. That's called abandonment. Now, the many names of the Moorish Empire are Al Moroccan Empire, Ottoman Empire, Washita de Dunmunya Empire, the Songhai Empire, which is the Malian Empire, Egyptian, the Kushite Empire, the Berber Empire which are all one and the same. And as you can see, consular court, real quick, are courts held by the consuls of one country within the territory of another under authority given by treaty for the settlement of civil cases. In some instances, they had also a criminal jurisdiction, but in the respect, were subject to review by the courts of the home government. The last of the United States consular courts, Morocco, was abolished in 1956. Why was it abolished? It was abolished because people left their offices. The people left their seats. So let's not make the same mistake twice. That's all I'm saying, people. As a people, let's not make the same mistake twice. Okay? Let's not do that. Our babies deserve better. Now, the reason why I pulled this picture of this brother up which is uh, Brother Sunni Ali Burke, um, 1464 to 1493 of the Songhai Empire. This is a Moor right here. And this is a Moor who lived and died before the turning of the new age in which um, Columbus made a trip or a journey to the new lands. All right, so you have a man here who lived his entire life free, not shackled, not bound, um, to any other man's laws, just to those laws of his customs and his ancestors. So we definitely were living well before uh, Columbus got to town, and we were doing well in all of various aspects. So we need to start doing business internationally. We need to get back in touch with our brothers and sisters across the waters so we can get what we need to get, come bring it back here and make the flip. So we can do the same thing again. All right. And this is just the outline of the Sun High Empire. Essentially, um, you can read this on your own time. You know, by the way, uh, all PDFs, I mean, all PowerPoints are 10 notes. If you're interested in the PowerPoint, Email me at sunnahuniversity at gmail.com. Um, you can uh, send all uh, donations or gifts to uh, PayPal, Sunnah University, um, at gmail.com. That's the PayPal link. Um, like I said, 10 notes for a PowerPoint. Just send me the confirmation of payment in the email to sunnahuniversity at gmail.com, and I'll email it right over to you. history of Morocco spans over 12 centuries. Without considering the classical antiquity, the territory corresponding to Morocco was inhabited by Berbers since at least 5,000 years ago. The Alui dynasty distinguished itself in the 19th century by maintaining Moroccan independence, while other states in the region succumbed to European interests. In 1912, after the first Moroccan crisis and the Agadir crisis, the Treaty of Fez was signed effectively dividing Morocco into a French and Spanish protectorate. In 1956, after 44 years of occupation, Morocco regained independence from France and the Kingdom of Morocco. From France as the Kingdom of Morocco. 
So I understand now. Morocco then gained its independence officially until uh, 1956. Think about that. So Morocco didn't gain his freedom until 1956. Oh, close me up in there. Well, I guess I'll do that over again.